yeah, this game... I was hoping for something. But my faith was not redeemed. Instead, we got arguably the worst game of all time. And not only that, but the worst game of all time that was also a scam. You see, a lot of people want to throw, oh, this is the worst game of all time. They want to throw that out there about some games. You know, for instance... Star Wars Battlefront 2, the most recent Battlefront 2. A lot of people threw it under the bus because of the, uh, you know, microtransactions in the beginning of the thing, or in the beginning of the gameplay's life cycle, or the game's life cycle, and basically after that, everyone regarded it as dead. But yeah, there's nothing else to it. Whereas the game, according to a lot of people, is really fun still. A lot of people play it and enjoy it. But the thing about it is, the game is at least fun. But it, it's fun. It was a scam, but they re removed the scam tactics and they actually turned it into a pretty decent game. This, I think, had no chance in hell of ever being updated to the point where it would be anything close to what they promised. Ever. I don't think there was a, a snowball's chance in hell that this would have resulted in something positive. I don't. I think it was a scam from the beginning. Probably. Probably. I think that... There's a lot of evidence to point to it. They put together something that had a wide appeal to a large group of PC gamers. And they didn't do any work to actually make it a game. I think everything they showed off was probably just pre-rendered. That's what I would think, too, at this point. And the Seeing what the game the is now. The entire time was just to release it, grab a bunch of money from people, and then cut and run. And that's exactly what they did. Yep. And I lost all my faith in it whenever they said that they had made the decision oh, after showing God. off pretty much complete gameplay footage that they were going to take time to rebuild the game entirety from the ground up in a new engine. Yep. And I was just like, that doesn't make any sense. I remember when... I was like, put out what you'd already finished and fucking make a sequel in a new engine. Yes. Like... Capitalize on that. Or put out what you already finished and then start rebuilding it in a new engine and release that later as an update. Like, that's what Satisfactory did. Yeah. Like, Satisfactory updated recently to the newer Unreal Engine. Like, but they, the game's been in early access for a few years, so... Yeah. They've already been... They've already had out, like, what could be considered a complete game, even though they're not done working on it. Like, it's but, the opposite of this. Satisfactory is a fantastic early access game. I recommend that one to everyone. So, here's the whole thing with, with the day before... It was promised to be a massive open world zombie uh, like zombie survival game. Sort of like what we were promised with Seven Days to Die uh, and, a f and a few others out there. It's, but, it looked like Seven Days to Die, World War Z, not World War Z, but uh, DayZ. Yeah. Um, those kind of games, in terms of the way they had the multiplayer set up, the gameplay looks closer to like The Last of Us. That's what I, yeah. So that was the thing. It's like, it looked like one of those even style the of games font, like good gameplay. Even the font for the day before uh, that they had in their promotional material. Let's see, the day before. Yeah. Even the font that they had the day before. Look at this. Look at this right here it's and tell me that this doesn't remind you of The Last of Us. Hold yeah. on. The Last of Us. Yeah. Tell me that isn't just eerily just remind you of The Last of Us in terms of its uh, look overall. It's impossible to not... It's impossible to say that it doesn't. But... <clears throat> the day before... What they showed off looked like something that I would have been interested in despite not being interested in any of those other games that we mentioned before, like the Daisy and stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, it had a huge appeal... And I think that's what they did. They put together a concept they knew would have a huge appeal, but they didn't actually make a game that worked. 
they put out just enough to scam the shit out of everybody. Yes, they did. And that, in turn, has fucked up everything for, like, all... Like, any Anyone who had anything to do with this game. Hell, the studio, Fantastic Studios, shut down four days after this launch. Mm -hmm. Four days, y'all. That is record timing for a launch and a closure. Oh my god. And they basically put out a statement that was like, we'll be taking all the money to pay back our debts. And it's kind of like, uh, dude. What the fuck? As if you couldn't fuck shit up any worse. Jesus. It's so like you mean you'll be taking all the money to put in your own pockets because you're fucking scam artists. That's basically what I get from that. Alright, though. Anyway... The Act Man released a video talking about uh, talking about the day before. Let's see what let's see what the Mister Man of Act has to say about it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Fifty thousand gamers used to be hyped for this game. Now it's a ghost town. What's up, everybody? This is the Act Man here, and over the years we've seen games launch in pretty bad shape. Oh god. <laughs> we've watched studios wither and die. Oh, now, on rare uh, occasions, we've discovered that a new game was actually a scam. But never I can't remember what Volition win. did, but I feel like there was at least one game they did that I remember playing. Let's take a look. Oh, oh they were deep silver, okay. Yeah. The descent. Yeah, I like the descent. No, wait, no, I'm thinking about something else. I'm thinking about the darkness. Is what I'm thinking about. Free Space, Summoner, Red Faction. That's a oh, great one, dude. Yeah, okay. Red Faction 2, The Punisher, that one was a good one. Uh, Tom, Saints Row, there you go. Saint, they did the Saints Row games. That was something that recent Saints Row is why they're mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Game so bad it tanked their own studio. That is epic in terms of failure. The goofed up. Missed all three of these things happen at the same time. Oh boy, this is content. For a long time, yes, I it is. This. was the biggest train wreck I had ever seen. You call that a train wreck? This is a train wreck. No, I... Oh, oh Jesus! Whoa! What the hell? <laughs> I heard about this, but I never saw it. Oh, my God. <clears throat> what is this? <laughs> What is that? What is that? What, <laughs> you know, what, what the, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly my reaction. What? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please strap yourselves in because this ride is not for the faint of heart. The day before just might be the most disastrous high profile video game release of all time. Yes. Bro, you thought Forspoken was cringe? I just moosh it with my mind. That <laughs> The fact that the the fact that Act Man is talking about Forspoken in a positive light shows you just how shit this game is. Forspoken is a dumpster fire. Oh god. That is Shakespearean poetry. You think Redfall was ass? Oh no. S tier now. Gollum game? Officially no. Joined. Rise of Kong? A masterpiece. <laughs> is that Oh my god. I wouldn't say any of that, but <clears throat> it does kind of set a measurement for a 1 out of 10 versus a 3 out of 10, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So all those games, I mean, to be honest, for Spoken, from what I've heard, is like a 5 out of 10. Yes. Like, it's like, if you can stomach the cringiness, there's fun to be had there. Yes. Uh, Redfall is like a 4 out of 10, which is like... It has potential, but that it ain't it. Like, yeah, know. Gollum is... Gollum is a 3 out of 10, which is like... 
they fucked up somewhere. <laughs> and Kong is like a 2 out of 10, which is like... This would be funny to play one time on stream just to say you've played it and to make fun of how bad it is. Whereas the day before is The day before like... is just a fucking scam and horrible, like horrible. It's not even a train wreck. It's like a train terrorist attack. Yes. <laughs> like, it's god awful. Yeah. Oh. That is all these games were. They were mere mini Sorry, boxes. Trying to get compared comfortable to the chairs not cooperate. Oh, there we go. A massive heaping pile of shit that is the day before. It's an unfortunately named video game by the ironically named Fantastic Studios, who did a fantastic job of fucking up for our entertainment. For those of you out of the loop, the day before was promoted as an open world MMO zombies game, which is an interesting premise. And although parts of the trailers seem to have promise, the marketing was fishier than your mom's vagina. Turns out they didn't make the game <laughs> yeah. they advertised. Psych, it's a shitty extraction shooter instead. Yeah. Essentially, Fantastic Studios did a not so fantastic job of trying to scam potentially millions of dollars from the gaming community. Luckily, the day before has been removed from the Steam store and is no longer available for purchase. Bye, have and a great time. Should be able to get a full refund no matter how much time they played which I can't imagine would be more than like 15 seconds. I say they attempted to scam people because Valve holds on to the revenue for the first month and they pay out on the 30th of the next month. And it seems good Ooh. old trusty Gaben sniffed this rug pull out pretty quickly. Now if nice. only he could release Team Fortress 3. But how did this uh. happen? How could the most wish list Okay, now on Steam what Steam should do in my opinion is automatically refund every copy of this game that was bought. I do not think it is right for them to make people have to manually submit for a refund. Because there's going to be people that assume that because they played over a couple hours of it, that they're not going to be eligible for one. Yeah. Just my opinion. Team turn out to be the most blatant fucking scam ever. Well, what I have found will shock you. Now, I don't know how organized I'm going to make this video. It might just be a stream of random hilarious facts and tidbits about the game and its development. I honestly don't know where to start. Here's a fun fact. According to Ryan McCaffrey, this is the first time in over a decade that IGN has reviewed a game and given it the score one out of 10. <laughs> IGN's not exactly the most trustworthy outlet, but they but... got something right. Every once in a while, they get something the... right. Yeah, nobody's yeah. wrong a hundred percent of the time. But when they're right, you know you fucked up. Yeah. IGN review editor's note: faster than we could publish our early access review. The developer announced it was shutting down and the day before was removed from sale. <laughs> Faster than we could publish our early access review. Holy shit. <laughs> I have never seen a studio speed run its downfall like this. You know when a highly anticipated game launches in a clearly unfinished state? Or a new release is filled with predatory microtransactions and I do the whole Battlefront gaming bit. Well, this is, this is different. The day before isn't a symptom of shitty trends in modern gaming. This is modern scamming. When games release unfinished yeah. and broken, it sucks ass, yeah. But what normally happens after that? Well, we hear the same kind of thing from developers. We're working on it, believe in us, we're listening to your feedback, we're gonna fix this. And to... For the most part, most of them do. Uh, uh, well, and then, then there's the still games I'm waiting on like a year and a half later that I'm like, they ever gonna fix it but you have to but you have to take give credit where credit is due cd project red yes fucked up rectified everything that they rectified with the most recent updates to cyberpunk and now the game is what well, a lot of people say the game well, should have been i still wish that it hadn't have been the case in the first place though. no i know because there's it certain people have. like i've talked to online and like in their eyes like they will never give it a second chance like it, they, and that's their they fault. Up and ruined it, no, know? that's their fault, and it's the fault of this company of this company for releasing it in such a state. It's like they could have had one of the like most highly regarded games 
Easily. Probably alongside all the stuff that released this year, if it was released this year instead of back when it released, you know. Oh, dude, yeah. Like, it probably could have been if they would have released nominated it in 2023, for Game of the Year alongside Tears and Baldur's Gate 3. And if everything. they would have released it in 2023 instead of 2020, and, like, in between, they did, some, they did something else. They did, like, a little short DLC for... Another short DLC for, like, The Witcher 3. Like, put a team of, of like, 20, 30 people on that to add another DLC to The Witcher 3 as an apology. And it'd be free DLC. That's the thing. And they'd be like, but trust me, when Cyberpunk comes out, it will be ready. And if they'd released the game in the state that it's in now versus when it originally launched, I think the game would have easily been a 9.5 out of 10 across yeah, the board have, from a lot of people out there. It would have way more of a solid fan base. Yes, I agree. They could have even done, you know, edge runners between then. And oh, that. dude! Like, as yeah. like a, to hype everyone for it. Like edge runners would have been after would've everyone been saw shit. edge runners, they would have jumped into what it is right now. Well, and been like it's not quite edge runners, but it's pretty damn good. Well, no, dude, edge runners. The thing with it is, you get the universal appeal of that. Like, I would release that six months before I released this. Yeah. Let the hype for Edge Runners build the the love for Cyberpunk, then release Cyberpunk. Edge Runners is probably partially what saved them in general. Oh yeah, I think with Ooh. I think if Edge Runners hadn't ex- existed and the 2.0 update came out, yeah, there's still a chance I never would have gone back and played any of it before the 2.0 update, and I still might be sitting here right now, being like, I've been hearing it's pretty good, but I'll get to it when I have time, you know. And instead, because of Edge Runners, like I've kept up with it. I played it after 2.0, and it's pretty fucking dope now. Like I'm like I don't regret having gone back to it. Thank you for your patience. And then what do we do? We all add another apology post to the collage, and we've seen this with multiple Battlefield games. So I'm still waiting no on Man's Sky. Fallen Halo. Order to be fixed. Oh yeah. Not Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor. Well, to be fixed for PC. Hold on. Let's see what the status of Jedi Survivor for PC. Um, according to Steam reviews, the most recent update they did might have finally started to fix it, but they're still mixed. Still isn't, isn't good enough. As of September. Damn. But if you look at Steam right now, some of the most recent reviews were saying they f- might have finally fixed it. But it took them way, way too long. Six months, yeah. Damn it, I clicked the wrong one. That is not... <laughs> uh, what was that there? <laughs> Jedi survive. <laughs> Jedi was, survive. Hold that was, on. That was some bait. Hold on. Bait. Let's let's take a look at. Let's take a look at. I'm gonna take yeah, the take this off. The mixed screen. all time, but the recent reviews are finally very positive. So I think they might have finally got it fixed. Hold on. Jedi survive. <laughs> you must log in. Yeah, I know why. I'm I'd, logged in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I know why. <laughs> Hold on. There it is. Jesus wept. Looks like it has quite an interesting plot, doesn't it? Oh, plot. 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 Oh, plot. Plot. Stop. You're going to sell it to me. I don't, I don't need to buy stupid shit. <laughs> it's a dollar. <laughs> really? Yes. Fuck, why'd you tell me God that? dang it, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I mis- I misread. It was $99. Yeah, okay. That sounds good. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> like a dollar? That's a steal. Like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Infinite Halo MCC. I'd say in 99% of bad video game launches, the developers try to fix it. Yes. There is an attempt. What they never do is fucking give up after four days 
four days after launch they shut the studio down why even release the day before what was the point of any of this if your goal is to scam people why not take a tip from todd howard tell them sweet little lies let them believe you're gonna fix this until the 30th of next month get the payout and then just dip out this game is something so tells me the studio behind doing this it's not the brightest bulbs in the box no they're not if anything, I would say they're pretty, overall, kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. doesn't even function as a proper scam. You couldn't even scam people right, dude. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> the I agree. Ball, though, if you go back to some of these old trailers, even back then, two years ago, people were calling this game out. This game has a 0% chance of being anything like this. I just want you guys to watch parts of this trailer and see how, like, unnatural and weird it is. This is the announcement trailer posted January 29th, 2021. Running out of fuel. Great, man. Awesome. We'll look around here, I guess. Already, you can tell that this is not how people talk in actual comms. Mm -hmm. I hate it when presentations do this. They make it feel so artificial and fake. Shall we split up? Oh, we're out of gas. Oh, no. Better stop here. Instead of just be like... It's like it's obvious it's someone reading a script, not yes. actually people playing the game. Now, if you want to just be like, be like, Hey, man, what's the gas at? Says we're only about 10%. Shit. Alright. You want to stop up here? Yeah, let's let's yeah. stop on the outskirts of town. That That's even a little unnatural for how I usually talk with people when I play games. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's like, okay, like, like let me actually put myself in playing the game. Okay, okay. Shit, we're going to have to stop. There's no gas left. Oh, shit. Alright, right up here. I think this building's probably... Let's hope they have something. Let's check it out. Okay. All right. So All right. Going walk, in. Watch the streets. Watch oh. the alley. Yeah. I got it. All right. I'll go in first. Cover my back. I got you, bro. I don't hear anybody yet. Wait. Uh, hang on. Check the stairwell. I, I thought I heard footsteps. We're good. We're good. Okay. Like just, you know, you know what I mean. Like yeah, people don't like, talk like and then, this. When and then also, games. you know, you'll come up with strategy. Be like, okay, remember, bro. Remember, bro. Check the stairwell. Make sure there's no one hiding under the stairs. Yeah. And, shit like that it's like you want to go back i'll go front we'll meet in the middle exactly like stuff like that you know up. you know yeah. what i want it's like they're like not not like you want to split up yeah like <laughs> you want to split up and, and i yes. watched this trailer and i didn't pick this up until he mentioned it now that he mentions it it's very robotic yeah i'm just like okay yeah that's actually really obvious now that he said so it. you know what i want i want naughty dog what I want you to do, take like take Neil Druckmann out of the equation, put The Last of Us property in the hands of a developer or of like a development team that actually wants to do this and make yourself and Considering they himself. just canceled their 2.0 Last of Us multiplayer, I don't think they're trying to do anything. Well, like, this is the, actually make them money. But that's the thing. They were still trying to do traditional like lobby based multiplayer whereas if they do something like this or more battle royale inspired i think it could do something i'm trying to think who i would even trust dude rehire bruce straley get him back in the fold the what, the original game director of the last of us part one get him back in the fold bring him back as like the overall project manager and then you hire someone who is good at develop at you know good at developing online you know online games in that manner? Hell, bring in the Daisy developer. Have him you know have him assist you with the project. Do something like that. There's so many opportunities for something like this to take off and actually be something, but yet now it's gonna everyone's gonna have a bad taste in their mouth because of what this studio did. Fuck. Like I was telling people, depending on who picks it up, someone could grab this concept and run with it and turn it yes, into something good. They could. And I would love for that to happen. As long as they're reputable to start with. Like, yes. If no, if a nobody picks it up, it's probably going to go nowhere because nobody will trust it. Unfortunately. But if somebody with reputation already picks it up, then 
it's possible for someone to make this concept into like a big game. Yes. That does really well. Yes. I'll find out what's in the skyscraper. Okay, and I'll look around here. <laughs> that is so this bad. Is, this is how people talk. This is how people talk in multiplayer co-op games. All right, all right, all right. I have found a great cowboy hat. Tell her everything's all right. And there aren't any more guns in the valley. Easy, cowboy. Oh, dear God. Okay. In the survivor <laughs> colony, you can sell and buy any items as well as cooperate with other players. Oh, the voiceover, I'm pretty sure, by the way, that they used AI to generate I would the voices that. in all of the trailers and in all of the game. There's like this unnatural monotone delivery on everything that betrays the tone. And I'll show you, I'll show you some examples of that. The things are about to get heated. The things are about to, to get, get heated. heated. <laughs> Check this out. That's actually what he says. He doesn't say but things. Look, I, I, I checked this with the subtitles. The things are about to get heated. <laughs> the things are about to get heated. Wait, is that the official or is that automatic? It's, it's what it sounded like. Subtitles. Though. The things are about I hear but and I hear the. Hold on. Dang it. Now, Ackman, you're making me have to go back and look. At the, there like is the, the whole the like uh, visual confirmation audi auditory. Like, yes, hold on. Video. The day before announcement trailer. All right. Yep, that's it right there. Auto generated. So these are not official subtitles. These are auto generated by YouTube. So. The auto generator did hear the too. <laughs> it heard the too, but yeah. I hear I can hear but or I can hear the, you know, like green needle or a brainstorm. Mm. About to get heated. The things are about to get heated. Jesus Christ! You want to say something funny? Check this out. <laughs> Get ready for the best survival experience of the year. Studio shuts down four days later. The day before offers a uniquely reimagined journey into post-apocalyptic MMO. Did you hear that? Did you li listen to how she says into the word post journey? She like MMO. slurs the word. And this is this is the kind of stuff. These are like artifacts in the audio that lead me to believe this is AI generated. The uniquely reimagined journey. Reimagined journey. If you're a professional voice actor, like doing voiceover for a production journey. that is supposed to be decently big, you don't fuck up on something like that. You don't fuck up like that. The day before offers a uniquely reimagined journey into post-apocalyptic MMO open world survival. I also like how this is like a post-apocalyptic setting and you have this like upbeat techno music going on with this yeah. light-hearted female voice. It's too brightly lit in that trailer. Too. Yes. Where's the doom and gloom? Because that's what people are signing up for. It's, again, it's like the tone does not match up with the setting. It's, it's, it's just everything about this is unsettling to me. Select a personality, choose a gender, and customize... Did you hear that? Choose a gender. It's... I know I'm getting hung up on this AI voice stuff, but I it, it's so unnatural. I'm pretty I sure they cut corners and just used AI for all the characters because everyone sounds flat and monotone. The point is that these trailers did not depict something that felt real or like an actual video game. With hindsight, knowing that this was a scam, it's funny to look back at this. Now, I also want to talk about uh, the developers' responses because those are fucking hilarious, but... I thought it'd be funny to point out the obvious similarities between the branding of the day before and the- See? Mm -hmm. What did I say? Oh my god. It's like, if you look at the E... Yeah. The E is exactly the same shape. Yeah. Like, they've slightly changed the shading. And the O. Line. The O as well. Yep, but the letters are the same shape. Even the eight, dude, everything is exactly the same. I mean, it's just a straight up. Wait a minute. The day before The Last of Us. 
That's what they're gonna call the next scam. The day before <laughs> The Last of Us. Oh my god. Oh my god, I've cracked the code! Also, apparently- No. Yo, yo! Someone get H. Barber guy. Plagiarism. Plagiarism right here. Look at this. Yes, they copied the cinematography of the Black Ops Cold War trailer. Wow, dude. Whoa. This is just the tip of the iceberg of things that were stolen, copied, or plagiarized to make this game. Also, side note, this is what their Discord server is like right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't approve of of you know shit posting to the point of where you're literally shutting down a server. But if there was one instance where I would be a hundred percent on board with, here you go, because these fuckers deserve it. These fuckers deserve it. Are you see? Did you see the? The, the the day before my money mm -hmm. like oh <laughs> i think that's enough of that so knowing what yeah now, let's go look at there's a if you ever wanted to know what cancer sounds like on an ultrasound by the way there was words and stuff that flashed on during that and images you're gonna have to blur that yeah. There were in words and stuff flashing on the screen if you missed that. So, post production, mate. Please. <laughs> I think that's enough of that. So, knowing what we know, let's go look at the developer responses and work our way down because that's where things get very strange. Which, by the way, the studio behind this game deleted all the videos on their channel. That's bizarre. That's interesting. Also, the uh, CEO of the company purged all of his social media accounts. Wow. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. It's also a good sign when they're rebranding their older games to <laughs> a different studio name. Not suspicious at all. Not suspicious at all. But the real gold, the real gold is on the fantastic Twitter. So this is their official statement, 27 million views. Today we announced the closure of Fantastic Studio. Unfortunately, the day before has failed financially and we lack the funds to continue. What do you mean it failed? It's been four days. You haven't even gotten paid yet. Imagine a YouTuber opens up yep. like a merch shop and then four days later, he's like, nah, we gotta shut this down. We, we didn't sell enough t-shirts, guys. Four days, yeah, that's enough time. Just, just shut her down all income received is being used to pay off debts to our partners it's weird how they've mentioned money three times in like two sentences who are your partners bro we invested all our efforts resources and man hours into the development of the day before which was our first huge game Aww. you didn't have shit for resources bro also fun fact they say man hours and resources they were using a volunteer developer force it's the freaking people who were working on it were even getting a scan Yes. Damn. Have you ever heard of such a thing? What is this, the coal mines? Volunteer developers? But unfortunately, we don't have the funding to continue the work. What work? You didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. My work here is done. Like you didn't do anything. Then, then like... No need to thank me. For what? Like tabbed out. It's important to note that we didn't take any money from the public during the development of the day before. I like how they have to specify this. They seem ultra concerned about money for some suspicious reason. I wonder why. Mmm, mm. brain blast. It's because this was a scam. We did everything within our power, but unfortunately we miscalculated our capabilities. Creating games is an incredibly challenging endeavor. Again, all these statements are super fucking funny with the power of hindsight. So, they they I'm going to make up a theoretical situation here, but I have a feeling behind the scenes it probably went a little bit of something like this. Just recently. not I'm not going to recount the whole tale of it, but just the day of them releasing an early access. All right, man. Ready to pull the trigger on this uh, game and... Get all this money, man. Going up on Steam and early access. Today. We're gonna get so yeah, much money. let's get some money. 
It's like, all right, let's do it. A couple days later, I just found out something shitty. Steam's not paying us until the first of next month. Shit! And everyone is going to refund the game because it's not really a game. It's a trash pile. Yeah. Well. Not a good look. This didn't work. And big red delete button on everything. Delete everything. Took five years to develop this game. The fun thing about that is there is this Reddit post by Epic Story 1989. Shout out to him for compiling this that catalogs all of the assets this game purchased from the Unreal Engine store. What? Look at that. Right down to the look at this. The inventory system. They didn't make this, they just per Oh my god. Oh my god. Dude. So it was all just an a asset piecing together just to have something to put on Steam to try to get the money from everybody? Yes. Asset. This game is an asset flip. Now, what that means is developers can buy things like this to speed up development of their games. Usually with independent studios, it's, it's more of a thing, yeah. I, I believe. But it helps so that they don't have to create it themselves. Now, for some parts of the game, that's totally fine to do. But to do it to this degree is just insane. The fucking city, that like the city the game is set in, is a purchased asset. They didn't make that. I don't think they made anything in this game. So what they did was they bought all these assets and then they just threw it in a blender and they pushed it out there while making fake trailers to promote a, a different looking game entirely. So it's incredibly funny when the, when the company talks about how much effort, blood, sweat, and tears they put into this, when I don't know what the fuck they actually made. If you're curious to check out this post, I will link it in the description. And they also had issues with the trademark of the day before. Filing January 7th, 2022, status application remains suspended. So I, I could be wrong, but it sounds like they didn't even have the actual trademark to this game. The rabbit hole is, is fucking insane. Here's yes, a post it is. from the CEO, Edward Gotafstev, which shows 200,000 sales in just a few short days. 91,000 of those refunded. And that they have a contract with the servers for $1 million a year. So they are burning money. Well deserved. So people were obviously curious and looking for an explanation as to how this could happen. Luckily, Fantastic responded to some people on Twitter. Unbelievable that you guys hyped this game up so much and this is the end result. You are an absolute disgrace to the video game industry. This was our first big experience. Shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> Shit doesn't usually happen in a way that is that fucking terrible looking on your part. <laughs> yes. Shit happens in terms of games die and fall through, but shit doesn't happen like what you just did unless you were trying to scam people. Ugh. Happens. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like a fucking... And this is like highbrow satire parody, I think of the most incompetent video game studio that has ever graced the planet. Imagine if CD Projekt Red, like four days after Cyberpunk came out, was just like, well, yeah, this was a much bigger game than we've tried to make. Uh, shit happens. Where is the PR department? Where is the PR department, bro? It doesn't that exist. The volunteers too? Sell what? Other people's work? It's 98% assets from the UE store. You flip the numbers, you can check. This is entirely our work. So now they're just lying. <laughs> No. I, I also love the fact that the fact checker, this was in fact not, not entirely, entirely their work. work. Yeah. <laughs> Get them, fact checkers. Okay, so now they're just lying. Community notes, which leads to this Reddit page I showed. Look at this. December 7th. This is four days ago. After five years of blood, sweat, and tears, we can finally say these words. The day before is out now. They they had to have known that they were gonna shut the studio down and that this was gonna be a complete disaster. So with the with the power of Captain Hindsight, seeing this you shit. You wanna know another red flag that I haven't really heard anybody mention? What's that? 
So you remember how it was up to be wishlisted on Steam? Like, yes. A while back. And then they removed it when they said they were going to rebuild it in another engine. And that was the point where I was like, this is a scam. <laughs> and uh, I think you were like, I'm still going to wait and see. Um, yeah. And uh, I was like... I'm an optimist I, I was like, I'm yeah. pretty sure this seems shady as fuck. But like, what happened was, they just released it out of nowhere. Yeah. They didn't release anything else to say that they were about to release it in early access coming soon or anything. Nothing. Like, they did that on purpose. They stealth released it because they knew if they started trying to do any kind of, like, advertising for it, that people were going to be like, isn't this the game that got removed from Steam after it was wish the most wishlisted game on Steam? Probably, yeah. Like, yeah, guys, don't be careful. This game looks really shady. Like, they did it on purpose to try to grab as many people as they could that didn't know about it. Yeah. Jesus. Fucking hilarious. This is where it gets weird. December 4th, okay? We're going down the rabbit hole. To our future player who will dive into the game on December 7th. I like how player is singular, as if they expect one person to buy it. We made this for you so that you will enjoy the game and it becomes a celebration. Again, very weird phrasing. Together we will yeah, continue improving like the game and adding content. Looks like there's been a change of plans. To a person who didn't believe in us. To a person. To the one person who was following hey, us. Hey, it was me. I, I like They're how they also specify. <laughs> I didn't don't believe don't accuse us of scamming. That's not true. We didn't take a penny from anybody. By the way, this game was $50. Early access. $50. Please don't accuse us of asset flip. That's not true also. Our team worked night and day for five years to make our dream game a reality. <laughs> our team. You mean the team of the volunteers that you willingly took advantage of? Incredibly happy that our game will finally see the light of day for everyone to explain. It's, Bet you regret that so decision funny, now, huh? Knowing that the game shut down a week after this was typed up and posted. To our supporter, the one, again, singular. <laughs> Thank you for protecting us from injustice and fakes. To a future streamer showing the game, we wish you many views and new subscribers. This shouldn't it be many view and new subscriber? We hope all the secrecy <laughs> oh. of the day before will help you make a ton of interesting content from the game. Oh, we're making content on this game. Oh, yeah, we are. I feel like this was also made with AI. We look forward to sharing the best days ahead with you. <laughs> now, one of the reasons I think this game actually generated so much buzz is because of the secrecy behind it. It showed a relatively interesting concept, but kept most of the details behind closed doors. If it turned out the day before was like a fucking revolutionary, awesome game, this would have been a pretty cool marketing strategy that probably would have paid off. Of course, now we know the real reason is because they didn't have a fucking game to promote. Mm, yes. You know what's really funny is this video. Oh, that's right. Uh... So this, is, this was posted 12 days ago. The day before arrives in New York. They're purchasing billboard space in Times Square, but they don't have funds to continue developing this? They also posted a global okay, launch so I was time. Wrong. They... they were trying to advertise it. I just didn't hear anything about it. They should have posted a global shutdown time as well. It gets stranger though. <laughs> On November 1st, we're happy to declare that we won back our name the day before in the Intellectual Property Tribunal. As I showed you, they didn't. At least I think they didn't. We dedicate this victory to all our future players. It's all for them. We didn't take a penny from people, accepted no pre-orders, and didn't harm anyone. <laughs> Whoa, buddy. <laughs> take it easy there. What have you ever heard a game studio be like, we didn't harm anybody? It's okay, we, uh, we didn't hurt anybody. Wait. Isn't this the same game I'm thinking of that, like, also, whenever they said they were rebuilding in the other engine, there were, like, things where... Oh, yeah, also turns out they don't actually own the copyright to the name of their game. Yes. Uh, yeah, that was the other reason that I was just like, this game's a scam. I didn't ask. Why are you getting so defensive? We aim to be an example to everyone, showing that the impossible is possible. Never give up. Excelsior! Really access on Steam well, since this is their first advice, huge game, and there oh, may be... Oh, you know it. Unforeseen circumstances. Now that is A plus foreshadowing. <laughs> so, this was the first of, like, five or six delays the game had. 
which is not a good sign especially when you're not showing people gameplay or something to whet their appetite it's also kind of a red flag if you're posting promotional material for something that you don't own the full trademark to we'll fight power is in the truth <laughs> these fucking posts dude here's one from february 7th we all live in a time of disinformation and lack of fact checking you don't say anyone can say anything for views and everyone will believe it disinformation needs to be dealt with as it can harm not only us but also other indie and small medium studios after the release of the day before we'll think about how to help novice developers deal with fakes and allocate resources for this they did help novice developers deal with fakes by exposing themselves <laughs> yeah but it's pretty clear Jesus. you know how often they talk about you know trademark disputes and we didn't harm anybody and we didn't we didn't take money from people we didn't we didn't you know do kickstarters uh, we don't have the funds to continue all this talk about money and not enough about just what the fucking game is going to be now if you check steam charts you will be thrilled to know that there is an all-time peak of 30,000. 271 people are playing it now. Also, I watched an Angry Joe video and he goes on Twitch and at one point this game had 400,000 viewers. Yes, father. No! No! 400,000 <laughs> viewers. Yes, father. No! Hold on, hold on. Wait, Joe. Joe. I hate to tell you this, bro, but other Joe just fucked your mom. No! No! Four hundred thousand people, at least, wanted to know what the fuck this game was. So, in conclusion, 2023 has been an incredible year for gaming overall. The amount of awesome games that have come out has made my backlog fucking massive. On the flip side. We've also gotten to see games so fucking bad that content making fun of them is also entertaining. This yep. is one of the craziest fucking things I've ever seen in 20 plus years of being invested in video games in the game industry. I don't know if we will ever see a high profile video game launch like this go so disastrously wrong. It's fucking hilarious. So yeah. Rest in peace to every before. game that was just mid this year that wasn't Starfield. That no yeah. One, that no one will ever remember exists. Because there are too many like 10 out of 10s and like 1 to 3 out of 10s this year. Wow. This has been a nice weekly dose of tragedy that I can watch from afar and feel better about my own life because it's not as terrible as whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> But thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and subscribe to the day before man for more awesome content all right everyone that's all i got for today this is the scam man signing out <laughs> peace peace out damn so yeah dude the act man once again just telling it like it is right mm -hmm. As he should. I mean, the dude's super, like, the su dude's just great at what he does. He, he covers all the bases to make sure that nothing is left behind. And he does it with a smile, and he does it trying to make you laugh. What else can be said except for... Nice tats, bro. <laughs> I'm just joking. But what can be said about this is just, like, dude... Well done, congratulations, and also to my fellow gamers out there who did not buy the day before, well done. You <laughs> saved yourself. Saved yourself the heartache. I mean, anybody who did, make sure you refund that shit. Exactly. Don't let them take your money. Even if you've had just the tiniest bit of fun fucking around in whatever shit show that is. It ain't worth it. Yeah, man, get your 50 bucks back. No doubt get something better at least <laughs> there's plenty on steam right now you could spend 50 bucks on that would be more fun than that oh yeah absolutely you can find a bunch of stuff for just like you want a bunch of stuff on there that'll keep you, you want to support a company that's a little bit scumbaggy but still makes things that are halfway fun i personally recommend immortals phoenix rising because that's what i've been playing it's a ubisoft game but it's yeah. actually a lot of fun it's a good he, game. He's been playing the shit out of that fucking game. I'm almost done with it. 
Yeah. So basically, there are four of the Greek gods in the menu. So, like, four major areas, and I've completed three of them now, and I'm headed to the last one. So I'm, Damn, look at you. I'm getting towards the end of it. It looks like there's a couple probably, like, ending areas that aren't the main gods areas to finish up at the end, but, yeah, I'm definitely past the halfway mark by a bit now. Nice. It's been a lot of fun, especially if you like puzzles. They did some good puzzles in that game. You gotta give them that one. Nice. That... I got nothing else to add right now. I just... The day before, what a shit show. And if y'all enjoyed and you want to see more from the act, man, click his name in the title of the video. It should be, like, right at... Like, right underneath Nick's foot or, like, underneath my keyboard right here. You'll, you'll see it. But that's going to do it. So until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Also, subscribe to the act, man. He deserves it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.